Welcome to part two. As I explained in the last video, Lev Nussbaum adopted the name Esad Esad Bey when he formally became a Muslim in Berlin in August of 1922. From this, we can see that Esad Bey is no pseudonym, as later Kurban Said was. Now, as you may have heard over and over again, Lev means lion, and so does Esad or Asad. I also have already explained that Lev got his first name from his paternal grandfather as it was customary in Russia. How do we know his grandfather's first name? Because we know his father was called Abraham Lebusovich. The Lebusovich being the so-called patronym, meaning son of Leib. And Leib is the Yiddish version of Lev, or Lion for that matter. So it is clear that there were Jews of Russian acculturation. In the last video, we left off with the question where Bey comes from. When Esad got divorced from his wife Erika and the press scandal erupted, a tabloid newspaper in America wrote that Bey was a hereditary title which Esad couldn't possibly claim. Now, this is a very strong exaggeration by this newspaper. And I am mentioning it here because this statement is still circling around somewhat. But it is a total misconception of the actual use of the word Bey in Turkey and other Turkic countries like Azerbaijan. Of course, there was the title Bey, which distinguished a high-ranking person from the ordinary common man. You can read about it in detail on Wikipedia. But did Esad Bey this really have in mind? He probably didn't. In fact, there is a very simple explanation for Esad's use of Bey. You see, when I traveled in Turkey, I sometimes was called Hans Bey, something which is very common. The word Bey is simply attached to the first name. Because you see, they didn't know family names in Turkey until 1935. For women, it would be the word Hanım. To attach the words Bey or Hanım to a first name makes the addressing of that person more formal, more polite. Now, since we know that the Nussimbaums stayed for a whole while in Istanbul, and since we know how fascinated Lev was of Islam, I take it for granted that he called himself Esad already there. So how did the people address him? Esad Bey. And at one later point, he simply decided that, he, that the word Bey will be part of his official name. It would be the same as if you decided that the English word Mr. or Mrs. is part of your name now, like a last name, while Mr. or Mrs. are no names, but the common way to address a woman or a man. But that's how Lev Nussbaum became Esad Bey. Since I mentioned the word last name, it is a problem I, as Esad Bey's German publisher, have today. I have to treat Bey as his last name in order to enter him into the cataloging systems. But to be sure, Bey was no last name. Esad himself always wrote his name with a hyphen, like this. We don't do that nowadays anymore, and I really don't know why. So, to conclude this, we could say that Esad Bey means either Mr. Esad or Mr. Lion, or Lion Prince, if you want to imp interpret the word Bey by that more noble connotation which I don't really think that he had that in mind. So this can be established. But can it really? If it were simple like that, it were strange, because after all, we are dealing with Esad Bey and nothing is simple with him. That's why there are so many misconceptions flying around the world all the time. So wait a bit and see what I have to say a little later in the video. Now to his pseudonym Kurban Said. 
He needed that after he got expelled from the German Writers' Association in 1935. The direct effect of this was that his books couldn't be sold any longer. In other words, he lost his income. In 1936, he met the publisher Ernst Peter Thal in Vienna, who had already started to publish so-called unwanted authors under false names and registered these false names under the names of non-Jewish people. He did this because he wanted to help his Jewish authors. So it must have been Ernst Peter Thal, the publisher, who explained the system to Esat Bey. And so Esat came up with the name Kurban Said. The publishing contract was written out to Esat's close friend Elfriede Ehrenfels, and Kurban Said was registered under her name. We don't know what exactly gave Esat the idea for that name Kurban Said, but let's look at the possible meanings of it. You might have heard already that it means happy or joyful sacrifice. That is true, but it is more complex than that. Let's first talk about the translation as joyful sacrifice. We Esad Bay researchers have learned about this interpretation from Jamil Bakamatsara's letters, which he wrote in 1976 to Esad's old friend Uma Ehrenfels and to the English publishing house Hutchinson's who had published the English translation of Ali and Nino in 1970. In these letters, he tells a fairy tale, and I have no other word to describe this story, that the name Kurban Said came from a misunderstanding he and Esad had with someone they talked to in Istanbul. Jamil claimed that Esad had a conversation with a stranger and when he Jamil approached, he wished that stranger Kurban Said happy feast of sacrifice or happy holidays. That's at least how Jamil puts it in that story. And that stranger thought that Kurban Said was Jamil's name and said, I am pleased to meet you, Mr. Kurban Said. Now, this is a very fishy story when it comes to the usage of the, of the two words Kurban and Said because neither in Turkish nor in Arabic you use them together as a salutation when you want to wish someone a happy feast of sacrifice. In Turkish you say, Kurban bayramınız mübarek olsun. May your feast of sacrifice be blessed. And in Arabic it's, Eid al Atha Said. Happy feast of sacrifice or Eid al Atta Mubarak, blessed feast of sacrifice. So Jamil, with his obviously limited knowledge of Arabic, made this story up in 1976 when he wrote these letters. Now let us look closer at the meaning of these words. Kurban does indeed mean sacrifice, as it is used in Turkish like that. But it is an Arabic word. But in Arabic, the word kurban is used only by the Arab Christians for the sacramental altar bread during the Holy Communion or Eucharist. So, as the common Arabic greeting says, Eid al hatta is the word the Muslims use for the Feast of Sacrifice. The word kurban is not used by Arabic Muslims. Now to the word Said of which we only know the transcription S-A-I-D, just as Esad had written it. Two different Arabic words can be behind it. Sayyid, which is something like Mr. or Master, or Said, which is happy. I once talked to a Turkologist, a Turkish professor, and she said to me, Kurban Said means joyful sacrifice? What a nonsense, I have never heard that. To me, it was always clear that Kurban Said means Mr. Kurban, just as Esad Bey means Mr. Esad. Wow, I thought, that sounds as clear as a bell to me. And it is really very interesting. So, ever since I took this as, it, as established, 
Esad Bey means Mr. Esad and Kurban Said means Mr. Kurban. The most appealing fact in this interpretation is the similarity of translation. They are pointing to the same person as if that person had a special intention by choosing these names. And I think this is still a point to be held in consideration. But then I read Esad's letters to Pima Andre, and now listen what he wrote to her on the 26th of November 1940. First of all, he was complaining how sick and disappointed he was. And then he wrote, By the way, my name is nothing but sarcasm when applied to myself, because Esad means the most happy one. But I cannot possibly claim that at all. Then he goes on a little bit and then he concludes. I am called the most happy one, but only if you write it in Arabic. If you just pronounce it without knowing how it is written, Esad means, in some dialects, roaring lion. And at the moment, I am more like a roaring lion striding lonely through a desert. Now, let's not focus if Esad's translation or interpretation is linguistically correct or not. It's only important what he wants to say. In other words, the meaning he gives to the whole case. And he said that Esad means the most happy one. Remember? Happy? Said? That was one of the two possible Arabic words behind S-A-I-D. So again, we don't know what Esad had in mind when he chose Kurban Said as a pseudonym for himself. The two possible translation possibilities are happy or joy sacrifice, or it means Mr. Kurban. And Esad Bey could mean Mr. Lion or Mr. Most Happy One. Now we could ask if Kurban Said means joy sacrifice, who was that sacrifice? Was it Elfriede? Because she made a big sacrifice to cover for him in a very dangerous time? Or did he feel like a sacrifice during those times? As most things in Esad's life, all these questions remain a mystery. Despite the fact that we have come a bit closer to the meaning of the words. And isn't it true? If they weren't a mystery, we would surely not talk about Esad Bey today, 80 years after his death. Thanks for listening. Please like and subscribe and ask me your questions in the comment section below. Goodbye.